I'm trying to size a portable power station and match it to my loads on what would be a house down in Haiti. Now this is a project we have coming up. So we'll be plugging a refrigerator in, fan, we got six LED light bulbs, a TV, and even a Gen 3 Starlink for internet. So it is critical that I size this unit correctly, make sure it's as cost effective as possible, as much uptime as possible, and it's kind of an overall plug and play, easy to operate setup. Now I'll show you our measurements at each circuit through the Emporia smart plugs we're using. Also with a watt meter, we'll understand our solar generation. And then I'll bring all that together in a spreadsheet where I have some flexibility to turn appliances on and off, and also can compare side by side to each one of our power stations that we're looking at. So starting off, I wanna bring as much solar as possible into the 500 watt solar input of the EcoFlow Delta II. I'm gonna use two 405 watt panels positioned facing due south and then the tilt angle i'll use the measurement app on my phone with the bubble level just place that right against the solar panel to get your angle and then make the adjustments if you need a reference for your exact location check a link in the description you can plug in your location and then get the desired tilt angle for each season of the year so if you haven't done this before it might be a bit confusing how do you bring two 405 watt panels equaling 810 watts of solar potential at standard test conditions, how do we land that within a portable power station that can only handle 500 watts? Let me show you what's going on. So if you look at the specs for the panels, look right on the back of the panels and you'll see your spec sheet. You'll look for open circuit voltage or VOC and short circuit current or ISC. These are kind of the highest voltage and current that we're gonna see coming from this panel. Then we know the Delta II specs are it can handle 11 to 60 volts coming into the solar input and a maximum of 15 amps. Two different ways to wire. You might wire your two panels in series. That is the easiest. You don't need a splitter. You do need a splitter if you want to go in parallel. Series, we would be adding the voltages up to get 90.8 volts and the current would stay the same because it just passes through from the two panels. Comparing these two parameters, almost 91 volts and 11.4 amps to our specs on the Delta II, that is a no-go. We are way over our maximum voltage and you cannot exceed the voltage. It'll either damage your unit or shut down your solar input. So it's a definite no-go and you always want to buffer to the high side, especially if you're in cold conditions because this voltage can go up if the temperature goes down. There's an inverse relationship. So in parallel, we're going to hold that voltage at about 45.4 for open circuit voltage under standard test conditions, and we're going to add our currents to 22.8. Now our voltage is good, well within the range and a buffer to the high side, but we are over our amperage. That is okay because the current will actually throttle to a maximum of 15 amps, even when you can produce more than that 15 amps. What does that look like on a graph? If we looked at the power that we're bringing in at 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., now this is gonna depend, it's gonna look a little bit different depending on your area. Let's go ahead and extend out that 500 watt maximum. And then at 8 a.m. we would slowly start creeping up and then quickly with two panels especially, we would go to the 500 and we'd basically stop right at that line and we would go across depending on the time of year, spring's gonna be a little shorter, summer's gonna be a little longer, and then we would start dropping back down to 8 p.m. Now, you are technically missing out on some potential power you could bring in and overall energy you could bring into your battery, but this is called clipping. So we are clipping that off, not utilizing that because we're staying at the maximum 500 because our current is being limited. I'm okay with that trade-off, because I want to do what's called over paneling the system. So on cloudy days, I can bring in as much as possible because we will not be reaching our 500 here. And I wanna bring in at least 150 or 200 watts to make sure I can replenish my battery. So what have we actually brought in to the Delta II? Over about five hours of having everything plugged in, you'll look at the lower left-hand corner and you'll scroll through, there's our amp hours we've added and you see 2,779 watt hours. So pretty amazing results for a beautiful day.
So now let's look at the other side of the equation, and that's the loads. What is the continuous and surge power that we're gonna need and also the daily energy consumption? And then we'll bring those into a customized spreadsheet and I'll show you where to download that for free so you can use it on your own projects. Now this is for a small home in Haiti. If you're looking to offset your power bill, you're probably looking at a much larger system and you can start off where I did with the link in the description or if you're watching on your TV, you can scan this QR code and that's gonna give you in a matter of minutes how large of a system in kilowatts you need and then also after the 30% tax credit, what is an estimate on the cost now, alternatively, if you wanna take that project on DIY and save on labor, there'll be a link in the description or you can scan this QR code. That is something I did last year on one of my rental properties and I'm also gonna be doing coming up this year. You can save a ton on labor costs and this company can help you walk through the engineering prints, getting your permits, getting all your materials delivered, you take on the labor and then they help you with inspections and getting the permission to operate so you can commission your system. So when it comes to understanding the power and energy, one, you can just look up the specs for each of the appliances, but if you wanna validate that, you can use something like this power meter I got from Amazon. It's gonna give you multiple different parameters. One, the summation of the energy used in kilowatt hours, but then also I like how it gives you the low power during that test cycle and also the high power during that test cycle. Here, this was for the refrigerator. So this 209 watts was during the defrost cycle and something you should take into consideration. Now, if you wanna go a step up, these are actually Emporia Smart plugs. Most people would use these for on off remote capability and integration into their smart home. But through the app, it actually has really good power and energy consumption bar charts that you can use for this exact type of application. So I just open up the Emporia app and I have all of my different smart plugs I'm using today for the TV, the Starlink, the fan, the lights, the fridge. It's given me overall today what those have used in terms of kilowatt hours. But then I can dive into each one of those circuits and get a bar chart and I can drill down to the live look of exactly how many watts that's bringing in real time. Or I can go up to my minute, hour, or usually I roll up to a day level and that's how I'm getting my numbers for my spreadsheet that I'll show you in one second, confirming what my continuous power but also energy consumption is gonna be for the duration I'm running each one of these appliances. So now let's see if the Delta II was enough for this type of use case and I'm gonna roll it up in the spreadsheet. If you'd like this spreadsheet for your own, QR code right here if you're watching on your TV or link in the description if that's gonna help you out. It's actually handy across a number of different applications and really anytime you're sizing a portable power station for your use case. So first up on this tab, it's the appliance list. This is the list of appliance I'll choose from and here's where I plug in the continuous power, surge power, usage hours per day, not everything is continuous and then that's what adds up how much energy we're gonna consume per day. Now we saw on Starlink through the Emporia Smart Plug, the app, 50 was actually not correct for continuous watts. It's actually 60, excuse me. So I wanna update that and that is also why I'm testing these things and validating them to make sure I have the right values, not just going off of specs that I find online. So I go over to my power station sizing tool now and here's where I start to select the appliances that I'm gonna use. My lights, my refrigerator, my fan, my blender, laptops, so I'm charging devices. I wanna add that TV on there as well. And actually my TV doubling back, I have 80 watts continuous. Actually the TV I was using wasn't even close to that. It was more like 30 watts continuous. And remember, update your hours to fit your use case. Here I'm saying six hours of TV being on per day. Now that's gonna roll everything up from all my appliances and it's gonna bring those results over here. That's gonna give me my overall continuous power, my surge power that I'm going to need kind of if everything's on at once. And then that's where we'll get our daily energy usage. Here's where people forget. You actually also need to add on losses. This is inverter losses from the portable power station. The value I have set here is for the Delta II and I'll show you there actually is, it's not created equal across all of them. So I'd add up the energy usage from all of our plants, the loss, and then that's what that battery is gonna need. Now I wanted my Delta II to fit my use case. And here is the other tab, which is the comparison of all the different power stations I'm considering right now both from EcoFlow, which I've worked with for years and years. Blue Eddy has great devices, a cheaper one, 
uh, from others, and then Harbor Freight coming online with theirs, so putting that in there. Now there's a bunch of other ones that you can add yourself if you want to adjust this for your own use case. But if we look at the Delta, continuous, no problem, it can meet that. Surge, no problem, it can meet that. Now that inverter loss, if we jump back to that tab, I have tested the 24 hour inverter loss on the Delta 3 Plus, the Delta 2, and the Predator 2000. The Delta 2 was the best by far. Uh, the Delta 3 Plus, I didn't love those results of what I saw, and the Predator was uh, not good at all. A lot of losses for a 24 hour period. If you do not take that into account, your system is most likely not gonna be sized correctly. So for this list of appliances, for the Haiti home that I'm trying to match up this portable power station to, the, the cheap Delta II, I'd love it to work, but not so much. So it's 1,024 watt hours of energy storage, and I'm gonna need about 1,786. Could I get it to work replenishing during the day and then just using it through the night and then replenishing when the sun comes back out? Maybe, but I need buffer. Overcast days when it's raining, I'm gonna need some extra buffer. You cannot be riding on the edge that much. So that's where I would possibly go to a Delta II Max, which will bring us up to 2048. Now the price tag goes way up, but the nice thing on the Delta II Max as well, that's gonna bring us up to 1000 watts of solar input compared to the 500 watts on the Delta II. And there's some, also Blue Eddy makes some portable power stations uh, like the 200V2 that are very capable and might be also a good option. Now, last thing I will say, one of the homes that I'll be powering does take the Starlink and Starlink is gonna be a big consumer. So you can see that moves my energy per day up quite a bit. And that's where I might actually have to start stepping up into like a Delta Pro or a just larger overall power station for the one home that will be running the Starlink internet. So let me know what you guys think in terms of what you would select. I wanted the Delta II to work, but I think for this application, I would at least have to get an expansion battery on the Delta II or step it up to the Delta II Max. Now, if you need a little more help on the wiring, series, parallel, series, parallel, check out this video right here and over on Everyday Solar, we'll walk you through all those different applications and dive a little bit deeper so you have a better understanding. And then if you're looking at 100 watt panels for your application, check out this video right here and we do a side-by-side -side comparison of about six different brands so you can easily compare those to see which one's actually gonna meet your needs. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.